think that'll do. That'll do. What's going on guys and welcome back to the vlog. Um, I don't even know what the date is, but I know it's Sunday, Sunday evening. It's 10 o'clock in the evening. And obviously tomorrow I'll be putting this out. So happy Monday. So for anyone that's new to this channel, you probably wouldn't know, but um, I took a little bit of a back step. Back step? Step back. Took a step back. I used to do vlogging, did it a lot, did it every week for about a year and a half. Uh, and then I stopped all of a sudden because um, I was uh, in a bit of a bad place. I was in a um, bit of a slump, let's say. Uh, and it got to the point of where it got really, really bad. And uh, I eventually got cancelling. And that helped. Here in the UK, we've got access to these things called IAPTS. Can't actually remember what it stands for, but it, it, they're good. And within these IAPTS, there's lots of different types of uh, cancelling that you can get. When I thought of cancelling, I thought of like having to pay 30, 40 quid a session. Just wasn't feasible. But where my missus works in this sort of sector, she was in the know and she sort of told me about it. So very, very lucky there to, to get on board in it. Most, most areas of the country will have this. If you're outside of the UK, I don't really know if there's an equivalent. But uh, the NHS has these IAPTS and um, yeah, you, you can get counselling in a number of sessions for free, which is really cool. So yeah, I did that and it really helped. What was actually wrong? Well, 2018 was the best year of my life and I vlogged it and we've got it all to watch back. Um, but it all happened so fast and I think in my life I wanted to hit a couple of achievements. Uh, one was get on the ladder, did that. Uh, and the other was have a baby, did that. But with that came a lot of adjustments. I wasn't used to spending my money on things. I used to spend my money on myself or experiences um, and now this house has been an absolute money pit. It's been a bit of an adjustment to have to earn money and then give it away straight away. I haven't had anything for myself for a long time and I haven't got a problem with that. I'm not really a materialistic person but I do like to have money and I know it's silly because you're not going to take money to your grave are you so you might as well spend it a lot of people say. But I think there could be a balance you know. So there's adjustments there. Obviously I've become a dad for the first time. I don't know what I'm doing. Babies don't come with manuals and as good as that time was um, there was a lot of adjustments there. I think with that that's when the issues came along um, and I don't begrudge or, or look at having a child or getting a house or having a family or doing anything like that um, as a bad thing at all. I love it. I love it to bits. It's the adjusting time that my brain had a little bit of an issue with. Yeah, ultimately when Mia was born, uh, Sha had a bit of maternity leave um, and I was working. I was doing the YouTube stuff and I was editing videos here and there as well and just sort of paying the bills and, and whatnot. And then when Sharan's maternity leave ended, she went back to work full time. And then my full time job had to sort of come back because YouTube isn't really a stable wage for me anyway. So we had to make the decision who's gonna be the, the, the breadwinner essentially. And with a child now, we had to look at stability and that was Sharan. So she's gone back and I'm essentially the stay at home dad. I'm working around it. So my week's work was then pushed into like about an hour a day. It, it, it was very tough. And this is a career that I'm really proud of. So in a way I was kind of letting go because I knew that I wouldn't be able to put as much into this YouTube thing, this editing thing, this video thing, whatever it might be, uh, as I wanted to. And for that, I started to see myself as a failure. Also, the views on the videos were dropping a little bit as well. And I think that might have been just where I was juggling. And it was a pretty crappy time because the problem with YouTube is it's very visual. And YouTube will tell you if things are going bad. On, on the back end of your YouTube videos, you will it will literally say, not as many people watching this. People have clicked at this, but they're dropping off earlier. They'll tell you, and it's, it's there to improve, but when you're in a crappy place, like that's the last thing you wanna <laughs> sort of see. And then finally, there's a few comments that came in as well, telling me that the channel's dead now. And that's, I think that's the worst bit. I mean, I can deal with hate and stuff like that, but it's almost like you have these faults and then they're validated by complete strangers. And that was like the worst thing. So in my head, the thing that I'd worked for for so long was, was, was going. And I didn't really realize how much I valued my job to be honest, um, until I got to counselling. Um, and we're gonna go over the thing that I learned uh, in a second. And maybe it'll help you understand as to why I felt like this. But before we do, um, I mean, I've been good. Like I have, like, since counselling has ended, um, I think it was towards the end of February. Here's the call. So we're now the 17th of February. So in that amount of time, if you think about the changes that you've made and, and where you are now, you know, it's really wonderful to hear kind of where you're at today mm. when we think back to that first session. Yeah, I was in a really good place following that. I was buzzing to sort of just crack on with life, if you know what I mean. And negatives that were coming towards me, I was able to sort of deal with much better. Whereas when you're in a bad place, you, you absorb them and you become negative. Now, I always planned on making a video like this just to kind of give people an idea as to why I sort of dropped off. And um, 
maybe it'll help people and help people understand it. maybe someone can gain something from this i don't know this week i had a few little negative thoughts pop into my mind and i felt like i was um sort of slipping back into that mode but doing this video now and and going over the things i'm about to go over may may help it might be a bit of a refresher session for me so it's going to help me and hopefully it'll help someone else like i say um so yeah i did uh, what did i do like three months worth of counseling i got a lot of sessions out of it um, the girl there was brilliant and the time was spent sort of just getting to know me and, and building a picture and I think just talking about things really helped at the start so this particular sort of therapy that I got was called CBT and it wasn't till about my ninth or tenth session I'd say which is when we really started nailing home and, and, and really working out how to beat this thing I'm not going to say depression but maybe it was I don't know so she gave me this piece of paper and I'm actually gonna like write everything that's on this piece of paper and have it on the screen right now um, and it was understanding your your values so to put into context understanding your values will help you recognize areas of your life needing more attention and what to prioritize in the future so she gave me a list of all of these words here on the screen um, some of them will jump out at you and some of them probably won't what she told me to do was tick off around 10 doesn't have to be an exact number but around 10 I think I ticked off 11 um, and they're all pretty good words to be fair but the ones that stood out to me was uh, things like love wealth family uh, morals success friends freedom uh, creativity stability loyalty and honesty those are the words I ticked them all off and I took them back the next week and she basically just really built up a picture of me just by ticking off these words obviously she'd already built a picture up of me in terms of like my, my issues that I was having but now she had um, some values to sort of pair that with and um, use those values to combat those issues that I was having. It was, it was quite clever what she did. What she then told me to do was take a top four, top three to four out of them. So I looked at the ones that sort of stood out to me and uh, one that jumped out, of course, was family. My family growing up was very, um, I don't know, it felt like four individuals. Had my mum, my dad, my sister, and of course me. Um, I've got very little memories of all of us being together at the same time. We were, you know, we was all in, <laughs> felt like we was all in different places all the time. So my upbringing, my, my idea of a family growing up didn't seem close knit, but um, it's nice now that I'm building one and I'm hoping that we can, we can have uh, something that I didn't have when I was younger or felt like I didn't have. I'm not saying that I didn't have it, but I'm, I feel like I didn't have enough of it. Um, so hopefully I can, I can get that sort of close knitness that's a word. And with that love, I think knowing that someone's got your back um, is really comforting. And if no one loved you or cared about you, um, I don't know how I would feel, but I know that I've got uh, certainly a few people that love me, which is which is really cool. So um, that's, that's a good one. So that's, that's something I value highly. Loyalty was a word that stood out to me. Um, it's definitely up there, even to the point of like things like football. When I was younger, I, was like, I stayed at the same club from like the age of six through to 16. And I took the color of that club and put it into Palmer's as well. I just felt very loyal to, to, to things in my childhood. So that sort of carried through for me. Uh, and obviously within a relationship as well. And finally, honesty. And I think if you can live your life uh, being an honest person, it, it can be so much easier. So those four sort of stood out to me as my sort of main values. And then um, I took the others and actually put this into a desktop screensaver so I can remember this. I'll show you a little shot. But um, yeah, it's all there for you. Like they're the main ones, the top ones. All the other, not as important, but they're sort of make up the rest of my values. They, they sit underneath. So basically I was feeling like a failure, but that was only in one part of my life. And that was like my career. And that doesn't really sit on my values, which is quite interesting actually. I mean, I've got creativity on there and success, but it doesn't sit in the main block at the top. So yeah, that was one part of my life that actually took over and golfed everything that I've been talking about just now with all these words. And it was the main thing. Um, when really it wasn't one of my core values. Career-wise, it wasn't going to plan, but actually what I did have was family. I did have love. I could be honest with myself about things and the loyalty was still there. So my main values immediately sort of realigned when we were talking about this. And I was like, yeah, you know what? Like, it's not all about the career. Although for me, it felt like it was. So it's just about looking over here again and rather than looking down at what wasn't going right. I think mainly this just helped me appreciate what I did have and, and, and being in lockdown as well was really, really helped. I don't know, I think, I feel like I'll, I'll look back at lockdown as one of the better times of my life. But it, it made me really realize that we're very, very lucky to be in this house, have a loving family, um, food on the table, have the money to sort of buy what we need to get in. We're not millionaires at all, but we're getting by it. And I think that was the most important thing. And seeing like other people struggle during lockdown, it was kind of like made me realize that we're very, very, very lucky. Yeah, everything's been good, but there has been a lot going on in terms of the house, uh, things that we want to get done. Um, I don't think we're going to be here for long. 
maybe another year or two, but Sharani's keen to sort of get it all ready to sell. Um, we want to get the floor done. I mentioned it in the um, uh, vlog a couple of weeks ago. We want to get step out the front, the driveway, the floor in here, the decking out the back, overall the garden, uh, the bathroom, like all of these things cost. The loft, um, there's so much. There's a lot of money we need to save up. And Sharan can't do it on her own, and I'm just topping up paying for bills and stuff. So suddenly, I kind of put that pressure on myself to try and get this money in. And um, I was given an opportunity, maybe last week, a very promising opportunity that allowed me to maybe earn some decent money to, to get this thing completed. And I think, again, my values sort of slipped by. And for the past week or two, I've been concentrating on this opportunity because I want it so badly, and I want want it for my family. So that, that sort of value is there, but it's overtaken and I've been going back and forth with this opportunity and it's not gone but it might not happen and it's it was the fault of it not happening and this opportunity actually came to me it wasn't something that um, I went and chased it came to me and it made me realize wow I could do something with this so yeah um, I've had my uh, my heart sort of set on this potential opportunity but actually it's, it was never set in stone and it, it's sort of 50 50 at the moment as I as I speak to you now so I don't really know what's going to happen, but it's annoying because I I quickly forgot about all sorts of values that I held, and I went back into career mode again. And it's a it's a dangerous place, especially being self-employed. Like everything's on you. Um, it's a it, it, it's hard mentally, I would say, uh, being self-employed. I think you have that safety net as being like a regular employed person. Um, holidays are paid for, sickness is paid for to a certain degree. But when you're self-employed, it's a, it's a lot tougher. It's all on you, and um, if things don't get done. It's because you're not doing it properly or you're not working hard enough. And when things start to fail or views go down in my case or videos don't perform to what you expect, um, you, you're very, I'm, I'm very hard on myself for that. And immediately it's those triggers of, oh God, I'm failing, this is over, I can't, I'm not gonna be able to provide for my family. Uh, I'm a failure and we went down that route again but yeah um, that meant that I didn't really vlog this week I mean we, we went for a walk a couple of times I, I just haven't really picked up the camera or been in the mood but I think just doing this just now has really really helped and, and made me sort of remember what what's important and if I can keep on living to these values then I can be successful and if you do the same you're more than welcome to take these words that I have been given and, and choose your own and choose your values and hopefully you can you can use that as a springboard to, to kickstart your life if you're if you're not in a good place. So yeah, that was kind of like an idea of what I went through in, in counselling. And I've just shared it with you. Obviously I had to mention everything else in between that, but this was a this was a this was a task that I, I did and I think this is the one that I remember most. This is what I take away from it. Um, it, it really helped. I've been talking for so long I can't actually remember if I mentioned that I was gonna plan on making this video. Because obviously when I brought the vlogs back I did want to mention it but actually um, having a nice dedicated video for it is, is probably better rather than it getting lost within a, within a vlog. So um, hope that was kind of useful. I don't expect many people to have sat through it. But if you did, comment below. Comment um, the word fruit bowl to let me know that you, you've you got this far. But yeah, that is this week's vlog. I do apologise that it wasn't sort of like all around the house. I've got a good audience who understands. So um, I really appreciate you guys uh, for being patient and hopefully we'll be back next week as normal. Football's back as well. Uh, that should be good. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. I'm going to go and edit this now because I've got to get it up tomorrow. So um, yeah, thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next one.